Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Portland records first murder for 2023. Portland on Saturday recorded its first murder for 2023, following the shooting death of a man in the former community of Skibo shortly after 9.45 p.m. Police sources have confirmed the incident and say the deceased, whose identity has not yet been ascertained, only recently moved into Skibo community. The police say preliminary reports suggest that the man was among a group of young men standing near a shop when men drove up in a vehicle and opened gunfire. The deceased was hit and later pronounced dead by a medical doctor. DPP reacts to injunction filed challenging extension of her tenure. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Paul Llewellyn KC, says the office is not short of successors. However, there are a number of party projects that are incomplete. Ms. Willen was reacted to a suit file in the Supreme Court seeking an order to bar the government from extending her appointment. Attorney at law Hugh Wellman, who filed the document challenging the extension of the DPP's tenure, is asking the court to rule that Ms. Willen not be allowed to operate in her current post when she reaches the age for early retirement. He had also challenged her latest extension of tenure, stating that the documents were never gazetted. Speaking at the Rotary Club of Kingston weekly meeting on Friday, Ms. Wellin made it clear that there are seniors among the carriage of 58 attorneys who are efficient and capable of filing the post. Ms. Wellin was granted a three-year extension in July 2023 as she was due to retire in September 2020 at age 60. Prime Minister Anja Holness, in announcing the extension of her tenure, said she performed well over her 12 years in office. Then opposition leader Peter Phillips has objected to the extension. Man charged after allegedly stealing phone $450,000 chain in Hanover. A man has been charged after he reportedly broke into a home in Nibel, Hanover and held up its occupants before making off with over $450,000 worth of goods on Wednesday, February 15. Charged with robbery, violence, housebreaking and larceny is 34-year-old Tyrone Parker of Escher District in Lucy, Hanover. Reports are that about 12 p.m., Parker went to a home and forcibly opened a window at the front of the house, entered and held up a man and a woman who were inside. He then allegedly stole an iPhone and a gold chain valued at $450,000 before leaving. The incident was reported to the police. On Saturday, about 2.45 p.m., Parker was apprehended by the Negro police and later charged following an interview in the presence of his attorney. His court date is being finalized. Government to increase engagement with parents in fight against child labor. The Minister of Labor and Social Security will be increasing engagement with parents and other key stakeholders as part of measures to eliminate child labor in Jamaica. Portfolio Minister Kalsamodo noted that there are approximately 38,000 children ages 5 to 17 who are involved in child labor in the country. He explained that it is against this background that his ministry wants to ensure that there is a shared understanding of what constitutes child labor and the separate object abuse from cases where children are allowed to assist their parents while still going to school and enjoying their fundamental rights. He was speaking at the award ceremony for the Ministry's Child Labor Video Competition held in New Kingston recently. We must rid our country of genuine child abuse through labor. That's how I would like to phrase it. Child abuse through labor. But the concept of providing a learning environment for a child, no matter how young they are, is a constructive thing to be engaged in. When they leave an environment of assistance to their parents and they go to school, they have a better appreciation for the need to apply themselves at school so that they will not have to have their children engage in what they have had to do to help their parents. I want to see us reshape our definition in Jamaica of child labor. What we are trying to do is to rid the country of child abuse. Abuse of our children where they are used as factors of production without reward, without taking away from that experience something that is going to redound to their benefit in the future. That's the obligation we have. Holness Golden hold first discussions in renewed Veil vale Royal talks. Jamaica Labour Party JLP leader Andrew Holness and People's National Party PNP President Mark Golden 
and Sunday resumed the Bill Royal Talks focusing their three-hour discussion on issues of national security and constitutional reform. The meeting was facilitated by the Jamaica Umbrella Group of Churches. A joint committee issued after the discussion said Holness Pledge to ensure continuation of the talks, which had stalled for some time. It said Holness also expressed optimism that the talks will foster greater consensus on challenges national issued, noting that the previous discussions were successful in achieving some understanding of critical national matters. We may not always be able to address these critical issues and ventilate them properly in Parliament, but we can ventilate them here at the political level. These talks have now become a part of Jamaica's democratic institutional tradition, and they have been viewed very useful for the political parties to find space, which is created for discussions under the Chatham House rules. It contributes positively to the building of a modern positive political culture and gives us a free space to talk about the important issues of the country, he stated. Holness added that the parties intend to utilize the talks to advantage the resolution of the contentious issue that divide us in the interest of the people of Jamaica. The Ville Royal Talks is a signal to the country that their political leaders maintain an open dialogue to resolve the major issues that concern them. Meanwhile, Golding said the fact that there may be disagreement on some issues should not be regarded as hindrance to dialogue, national unity and effective governance. It is a question of how we resolve those issues and the manner in which we conduct ourselves in bringing our points of view forward that I think is important. By deliberately embracing this approach, the population can learn from our leaders how to resolve issues where there is not necessarily argument, Golden stated. He said the opposition PNP had a duty to the public to hold the government to account and to represent an alternative view regarding how Jamaicans should move forward. The manner in which we do that is very important because it needs to be underpin national development and be part of a positive thrust towards stronger nationhood and deepening our democracy rather than something that undermines progress, he continued. The JLP delegation included JLP General Secretary Dr. Horace Chong, JLP Chairman Robert Montague, Molly Mullahood Ford, and Robert Nestor Morgan. The PNP delegation included Chairman Dr. Angela Brownberg, General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell, Peter Bontin, and Donna Scott Mosley. Westmoreland construction worker charged for allegedly assaulting man at home. Detectives assigned to the Westmoreland Police Division have charged a construction worker after he reportedly hit a man in the head with a gun in Venture District Vettel Town in the parish on Monday, February 5th. Charged with possession of illegal firearm, assault at common law and assault occasion bodily harm is 52-year-old Donovan Porter, otherwise called Donny Porter, of Venture District in Vettel Town. Reports are that about 7 a.m., Porter, armed with a firearm, went to a man's home and pointed the weapon at him. He then reported the use of her arm to hit the man in his head, causing pain. The man, in fear for his life, ran and managed to escape and reported the assault to the police. Porter was apprehended on Friday, February 17, about 7.45 p.m. during a police operation in Bethelton Square in the parish and charged for an interview in the presence of his attorney. His court date is being finalized. Police and FID say FBI involved in wider SSL probe. The Jamaica Constable Force and the Financial Investigations Division FID are seeking to put an end to suggestions that the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI has not been brought in to help probe the massive fraud at Stocks and Securities Limited SSL. Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson had questioned whether the FBI was in fact involved in the investigation as had been announced by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, following statements by the head of the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch CTOC on Friday. CTOC head, Assistant Commissioner of Police Anton McLaughlin, had stated that local law enforcement had the capacity to conduct the investigation and did not need the assistance of the FBI at this time. However, in a statement issued to the media on Sunday, the JCF and FED said McLaughlin was referring specifically to the local aspects of the fraud squad investigation that led to the internal charges against the accused in the case, Jean and Panton, and not to the wider dimensions of the SSL probe. They said the FBI has officially engaged in the SSL case since January 2023 and has been stated by Clark. We apologize for any misunderstanding that may have been caused in this matter. 
it has been outlined in previous joint released by FED and CTOC that this case is a complex one because of the length of time, the number of transactions and the number of accounts involved, the media statement said. It added, we are already seeing the benefits of engaging and involving the FBI as the extent of the case becomes clearer. There are elements of the case that cross into other jurisdictions and elements that will require detailed forensic auditing. The law enforcement entities said all investigative steps are being taken and all tools and regulatory protocols are being applied to this case. We continue to assure the public that the work to unravel this fraud will be thorough with a view of identifying all connected parties and bringing them to justice, they said. The SSL fraud is believed to be involved in at least $3 billion. Jamaican athletic star Usain Bolt has been fleeced of approximately US $12.7 million or nearly $2 billion Jamaican dollar in this fraud. Please remember to subscribe, like,